Here's a video of me setting up the MLM2 Pro to GS Pro connector made by Springbrock. First you go to his web link and we're going to download the zip file. That's going to go into your downloads folder. Uh, we're going to open that up. Right click. Choose extract all. Next. That's going to unzip the file in your downloads folder. I'll close out quick here. It's right there. We'll open it up. And what we're going to do is start the connector. It's going to give you a warning from your PC. You can click run anyway. And here is the MLM2 Pro connector for GS Pro. I'm going to open up the devices, and I'm using a Samsung Galaxy S6 tab, and I'm using Windows Phone Link to do my screen sharing. Let's open up Windows Phone Link. There's my tab. It's connected by a USB cord. I'm going to open up the MLM2 Pro app, all from the computer. And I'm going to connect it to the Rapsodo app. You're going to see the top. This window is called Ben's Tab S6. So I'm going to rename the, weird, the Mirror app window name. I'm going to click save. Now I'm going to connect my Rapsodo to my tablet. Connection successful. And I'm going to go to practice. I'm at 1500 feet, so I'll set that. I'm just going to choose driver. And I'm going to flip this to tablet or landscape mode. There's my alignment. I'm going to continue. We're going to select the data view, and in the settings, I'm going to choose the metrics. You need to choose these metrics. Clubbed speed, ball speed, launch angle, launch direction. You need spin axis, spin rate, carry, and side carry. Carry and side carry aren't as important, just ones I like to see. And then I'm going to go in and turn impact vision on. This is kind of cool because you get your stats and you'd see impact. I'll hit a quick shot here. There's my stats. Impact vision replace. Now we're going to go to the device and we're going to set the ROIs, which is basically what the computer reads to transmit. So I'll take clubhead speed box. I'm going to drag that around the clubhead speed number. And repeat the process for the rest of these. I'm going to save these, verify them quick. They're all checking out, close. 
I'm gonna open up one more time. What I did was I hit a new shot where ball speed was over 100. Or sorry, club speed and ball speed. Just to verify that these boxes were the correct width. I want it to collect, you know, not too far to the right, not too far to the left for ball speed and club speed. So I'm just adjusting the boxes, fine tuning them, got some new numbers. I'll do this one more time with a wedge. Try to get the spin rate over 10,000. Just to make sure that my boxes are covering the numbers completely for all scenarios. Save. Verify that they're reading correctly. They are. I'm going to hit a wedge here. Yep, got spin rate over 10,000. Let's see how much bigger that number gate on the spin rate column. This will help me to verify how far to the right my box needs to be. Looks like it's pretty good. I'm just going to shorten these up and sort of All right. We'll save, close. Quickly verify. Yep, it's reading correctly. And we're good to go. We'll select that. Now onto the putting. We'll select webcam from the top. I'm using a Logitech webcam. I know my camera ID is not zero, it's one. Zero is my front facing camera on my laptop. I'm gonna choose a red ball. It seems to work the best for me. I'm going to click save, close, and we'll start the program. When you open it up, it's just going to give you the view of the webcam. My webcam is mounted on the wall, pointing down at a perfect putting mat. Um, I'm going to hit the A key, which gives me the advanced settings for the cameras. Um, for me, I know that I don't need autofocus on. I just need to be zero or infinite. Um, and then I know I need my gain all the way up because I play with my room, the lights off. Once I shut them off, I'll need the extra um, gain. So now here's where you can modify where the yellow box is. You really only want it over the area you're putting Otherwise, it's going to be looking for the ball where you're standing, which it will never be. So I'm going to narrow these uh, boxes down to fit the area that I'm putting in. So I'm going to go from just before my 8-foot line to just behind it and cover just the green turf only. You do that with the X and the Y sliders. And you can see it's starting to pick up my ball. Um, it's not perfect yet. But it's working. Okay. So on the top left, it's reading a radius of 7. That's how large the ball is. Radius will also affect the speed in which it reads the putts. Here I've shut my lights off like I have it when I play. Um, I've got a couple of night lights on the wall that light up my putting area. And I'm going to adjust my radius. Um, right now it's reading a radius six of six. And I'm going to adjust it to five. What that'll do is make it go a little bit faster. And here I've hit the D key. And that's going to show you um, the mask, which you see in that bottom screen where you see a white ball. And what I'm doing is I'm moving the hue minimum and the hue maximum to make the ball, which is the white color, 
in that bottom black box sort of appear and disappear. And you see as I move the saturation, I get a bunch of mysteries. What I want is just the ball to show up as a circle in white. And as I go too high on the saturator minimum, the ball disappears. So I'm just playing with these to, so that it just shows me that color of the ball. And I'm using a bright orange fulvic ball and essentially dialing in my hue, saturation, and volume axis. So I just play with it until the whole mass area is black and the white is, you know, as shiny or as, you know, contrastly white as possible. This looks good. So I see on the top right is just a raw camera. Top left is the actual program. Right below the program is the mask, confirming you know, how the program's reading the ball. So I've got a white ball on the bottom that identifies that. And I'm set up to put, I think. On the top, you can see it says it reads my radius as a six, but I've set it to a five using that A or the advanced setting. I'm going to open up the, the value here. I'm not getting it to pick it up. And it just seems like those weren't you know, properly adjusted. And again, I'm looking at that bottom mask area. I'm going to slide the saturation down a little bit. And you see it picked it up right away. So you got to play with those settings a little bit. Yeah, seems to be identifying the ball well. So we'll try to see a few putts now. Okay, now what you can't tell is I'm putting the opposite way and I can't figure out why. So I'm going to go to my camera settings. I just have a feeling that there's something flipped. And of course, I use this webcam uh, prior in a configuration where I had to flip it completely around. So when I go into the Windows camera set settings, it's got video rotation on 180. I'm going to set that back to no rotation. And when I start up the putting app, of course, now it's going to flip my picture over. So I have to make some quick corrections. Yeah, so you can see the boxes down there. So I'll click inside. We're going to click A for advanced. I don't need to change the camera settings. But I am going to flip the image. Okay. It's not the one I wanted. There we go. Now, to me, this view is exactly how I see myself in the room. So I'm going to adjust my boxes. All my color and hue settings are great. 
So those won't have to change at all. So the work we just previously did are fine. I'm just changing the perspective of the camera that I see on my screen or my second screen. There we go. And we can close out of that. Now I'll hit a few test putts. There we go. Just gonna check one more time. I hit the D key, show me the mask. You see in the bottom there. There's the mask. All seems to be good. So we're good to go. We're ready to go. So we've got the putting connected and configured. Um, I've set up the Android for my Samsung tab. I'm going to confirm the ROIs are still valid. I'll just save, close, and I'll select it. Now I'm ready on the launch monitor, ready on the putting. Time to open up GS Pro. And I'm going to click connect. When you click connect, you're going to get that green bar on top of that API. So now I'm set up. I've got in the top right my launch monitor. Top left, I've got my putting. Um, and you can see the connector running in the background. Boom, I hit a shot. And it, it records in the table on the connector. You're going to see the replay. Now on the screen above this is I have GS Pro and on my projector. So let me drag the Samsung view up onto the screen to show you there's a first swing and there's how it's reacting in GS Pro. And right now I have no impact replay on. So I'm gonna hit another shot And it's just reading the numbers off the tablet and putting them into GS Pro and then visualizing on my projector and big screen. Now here I'm going to turn on the impact vision, which I like. So during, you know, like your sim session, I'll hit a draw here. And then I'll hit a little cut after this or a big one. You can see on the impact vision, It's going to do a little replay for us. So that's kind of nice. And I just keep that on the screen below. I'll hit a cut here. Just so you can see the impact vision. And I like this view better than the simulator view. The simulator takes time to calculate the distance because it shows you that simulation of the ball flying. Whereas in the practice mode, it just spits out the distance. It doesn't waste time on the animation or processing on the animation. The only drag is it's constantly transmitting video. And that might possibly be why it gets so bogged down when it's in simulator mode. Now here, I'm going to show you the putting. We're going to play that practice course in practice mode. And for settings, I'll put the stimp at 10. We'll leave the putting at hard so it's very realistic. Actually, we'll go up to 11. And putting assist, I'll leave off. Putting assist divides your horizontal launch angle by 10, essentially makes every putt straight. I'll drag the putting view up so you guys can see it, just like I did the side-by-side -side for the Rapsodo launch monitor view when we were hitting on the range. But here's the putt. And there you can see I hold it. To me, that is, I hit that way harder than five feet. But let's try again. I'm going to hit this about five feet. Yeah, a little, I don't know. So I'm at the eight foot mark. If I hit it to the two, that's six feet. Let's try this. A little slow to me. 
as in it's reading slow on the screen. Yeah, that definitely went more than five feet. So I, I'm going to hit A and change the radius to four. Right now it's at five. So I'll hit A. I'm going to move the radius to four. There we go. I'll hit A again to close the menu. So radius is fixed at four. And what that's going to do is it's going to give me a faster ball speed. I put that about six feet. It rolled in. Let's see, basically from the beginning of my putt to the end of my window is about six and a half feet. And this is all dependent on green stamp. I have mine set 11. My radius is set at 4. All unique to my particular camera height and sim setup. This will obviously be unique for each individual, which was the whole point of this video. Hopefully it helps.